Okay, first let me apologize to all my Python peeps. This is a, a Java lesson, uh, something I'm putting together for my students, uh, especially I had a couple of missed class. So problem solving and iteration. So when we see the word iteration, we know we're gonna be using a loop because uh, we're going through a sequence. In this case, it's gonna be a string. Um, one of the things I always tell my students is that don't start coding the solution until you actually really understand the problem. It really helps to write these things out. It helps to really think through in a step-by-step -step fashion. Once you do that, the coding's easy. But if you're, especially a beginner, it takes, you know, it takes a lot of mental energy to do them both at the same time, and there's a lot of mistakes. Um, but there are some common patterns uh, you do see in code. Um, so for example, if you're looking for the sum of some set of numbers, um, you know that you have to create a variable called sum, uh, and that's going to be outside your loop. And when you start it, the sum is going to be set to zero. Um, so here's just a couple little exercises I want to work on. And this will kind of help build up uh, some of these skills that we need. The first one's pretty straightforward. Um, for example, how many letters are in the string called str? Okay, so I'm going to go over to, I'm using jgrasp. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a string. And I'm going to say string uh, str. And I'm going to say it equals A, A, B, B, C, 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 D, 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 E, E, E. Okay, just for example. And if I want to know how many letters are in that, I'm going to say system.out.println. And I'm just going to say print str.length. And don't forget the parentheses because I often do. And I'm just going to run that. And hopefully I will see 13. So there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Did I count that wrong? <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3. Wow, I cannot count. But yes, that is the answer to that one. So let's scoot back here. Uh, it says, assume you have three integers represented by the variables a, b, and c. Using three if statements, how would you find the greatest number? Uh, and do not use else if or else. Now, I know we can write this more efficiently using else if or else. But for this particular activity, um, we're trying to learn the concept uh, of using a, an external variable to do this. So you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, I'm gonna keep string there because I'm gonna need that in a minute anyway. So I'm gonna say int a equals 10, int b equals 20, and int c equals, let's say five. Okay, so looking at this problem, Ask yourself, what do you want to know? And this is the real key to this question. What do I want to know? I want to know the greatest number. Okay, so what we came up in class was int max int equals zero. Now we're going to just assume that it's a positive integer from zero to whatever, um, just to simplify the code a little bit. Okay, so we're starting out at zero. This is the lowest possible number that we can have because we want to find the largest. So what I'm going to do, and this is what a, a lot of students do this. They say, if A is greater than B, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which will work. It's not a bad idea. But if we extended this A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, we want to have something that's going to work no matter how many variables we end up using. So if A is greater than max int, because we're just basically comparing it to the maximum, then max int equals A. And then this pattern will follow on from there. So I can do B, B, and in this case, C, and C. Yes, there's, there's some other things we could, we could simplify it a little bit, but let's just keep it like this uh, for now, because this, this makes a little more sense what we're going to do later. So I'm going to run that. Oops, i got to print that out. So system.out.println, you know, max int. Okay, so we should get 20 because b is the largest. Okay, and we do get 20. Now, if we wanted to properly test this, we should test it with all possible options where a is larger, just to make sure it works. Uh, now we're still getting the, the right answer, which is nice. Um, and then I can make this 20 make this five, but I think I'm, I'm pretty confident this is going to work. It's, it's fairly simple, straightforward code, okay? So that is how we do this type of pattern. If we're looking for the largest or we're trying to keep track of something, we're trying to find something, 
we would use some type of variable to hold that information. Okay? And then we compare our possible choices, in this case A, B, and C, against that. And if A meets that criteria, then we set it to A. And if B set, meets the criteria, we set it to B. So just remember this pattern because you're going to see it time and time again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of that. Um, scroll up a little bit here. Um, so keep in mind I still have that string there because I'm going to be using that in a minute here. So let's take a look at number three. How would you find how many uppercase vowels are in a string? Um, so this is where it really comes in handy trying to write out the problem. Okay, so we got to find out how many uppercase vowels there are in a string. So I've got a string here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, create, a, a, you know, a, let's see, I, a, I'm going to call it a list, but it's not accurate. Create, a, well, decide what vowels we have. Decide the vowels. Okay. I'm going to say I'm going to iterate through the vowels. Then I need to iterate through the string. Okay, and then I need to compare each vowel to each string, to each, sorry, character in the string, if that makes sense. Okay, if the vowel is equal to the string, to the character, sorry, then I'm going to increment the number of vowels. Okay, and then when I'm done, I'm just going to print the output. So this is basically how we do it. We need to decide the vowels. Um, we also need to know the maximum number of vowels. And we're going to start at zero. We also need to keep track of the current number of vowels. So I'm also going to set to zero. Notice, just make your code a little bit more readable. Um, I've used num of vowels and max num of vowels. So I know these two are somehow related. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a little string. And I'm going to call this vowels, which kind of makes sense. And in this case, we're just using A, E, I, O, U. We'll ignore the sometimes Y for now. So now I'm just basically writing the code. So iterate through the vowels. Okay, so for int i equals zero, um, i is less than vowels.length, and i plus plus. This will let me iterate through every single vowel. So start with a, then i, uh, e, i, o, and u. So now what I might do, depending on how you want to do it, um, I want to indent here because now we're inside of a for loop. Now it says iterate through the string. So I'm going to say for int, I'll use j in this case, uh, and j is less than uh, string.length and j plus plus. Okay, so I got that and I forgot my closing uh, braces here. And let's see here. Sorry, I hate to lose losing track of the cursor there. Um, so again, I might want to indent that. Okay. So now I'm just following what I wrote out. Okay. Compare each vowel to the character in the string. Okay. So this, what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to go ahead and make a little temp variable that I can use. So string um, vowel and string variable, uh, sorry, uh, character, character. Okay. And I can just, if it makes it easier in your head, we can set those equal to uh, empty string rather than null. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is outside the loop, I need to know what the current vowel is. So vowel equals vowels dot substring i comma i plus one. Memorize that pattern because you're going to see that quite a lot. And then here, I'm going to get the character equals str dot 
uh, what is it? Substring and j in this case, j plus one. Okay, so now basically I can just write it out practically in English. So if uh, val, or I say if character, well it says val, it says val, val dot uh, equals character, if they're equal, we just increment the number of vowels. Pretty straightforward. Put that back. And so num of vowels uh, plus plus. And did I miss anything? Oh, actually, I didn't. Is this question the maximum number of vowels? No. Sorry, that's for part number four. I apologize. So we don't need the max number of vowels yet, but we will in the next part. Um, so then I just print the output. So system.out.println uh, num of vowels plus num of vowels. Okay. Now just real quick notice, uh, this is outside of this outer loop here. Okay, so we got our outer loop, we've got our inner loop. Let me put a little space there. Okay, maybe separate that a little bit. And so you can see kind of how this works. Let's run it and see if I got it right. Sting, okay, it's uh, Sting. Great musician, but not a Java, <laughs> not a Java variable type. Um, okay, number of vowels five. So we got two A's and three E's. So I think this is working. Now we could test it further. Uh, we could put an O and a U and see if it goes up to seven. And you should actually test it, but you know, basically this is a pretty simple program. So we can leave it as is. Okay, so basically that's kind of the pattern what we're doing is we're iterating through this loop of vowels and we're checking each letter against each letter here. Um, so we have an outer loop. And then again, I really strongly recommend doing this, saying vowel equals something and then character equals, because down here, it makes your code a lot easier to read. It's a lot better than vowels, that substring, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, if you can keep it track, finding your head, that's great, but you, know, you might want to do that. Also using, you know, clear variable names uh, makes your code a lot easier to read, makes it a lot easier to debug, okay? Now, let's save that and go back to part four, which is a bit more complicated. Building on number three, how would you find which vowel is the most common? Okay, so hopefully you can see that that question is related to this one. Okay, so we're gonna be using roughly the same method uh, to keep track of which vowel is most common. So I need to know two things. I need to know how many times each vowel appears. I need to know which vowel is the most common. So I'm gonna go back to my code. Now I've already created max number of vowels and I'm gonna make a string max vowel. I'm just gonna set that equal to an empty. Okay. So now I don't need to know the number of vowels. I'm just gonna go, go ahead and get rid of that or I'll comment it out, just leave it there. Um, Cause this simplifies the code if you do that. So basically, think about this. I'm iterating through the vowels. I'm starting with A, then I'm going to E, then I'm going to I, O, and U. So through each inner loop, okay, I'm finding the number of vowels okay, for that particular loop. Okay? So when I start in here, num of vowels, equals zero, okay? So when I start with A, I have zero A's, and then I check, okay? Then I come around, I check E, I have zero E's, okay? So what I need to do is after this loop, so once I've checked every letter, see if uh, the num is greater than the max. Okay, so if num of vowels 
is greater than max, what did I put? Max num of vowels, as I mentioned previously, max num of vowels. So if I've got more vowels for this particular vowel, and I say max num of vowels equals num of vowels, exactly what we did in part one. And I also have to keep track of the current vowel. So I say max vowel equals vowel. So max vowel equals vowel. And then down here, print the output, same thing, wait till the end. System, yeah, system.out.println, uh, max vowel. I could have called it most common vowels, probably should have, would have been a little better. Max vowel and number. And we got, let's see, max num of vowels. Okay, so let's run that. And hopefully we don't get any, oops, that's compile. It's good, it compiled. So it says max vowel E number three. So let's go up here. And, okay, we got three E's, two A's. Uh, let's add a couple more A's here at the end, see if that works. So that'll give us five A's and three E's. So you gotta kinda do some testing on this in different test cases. So A number five works. Um, so you can see that A works even though they're separated. And let's add three more E's. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we got six E's. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied that this is going to work properly. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at that real quick. Um, we've got our string. Uh, we need to keep track of the maximum number of vowels. We need to keep track of which vowel is the most common, because that's what we're trying to find, these two pieces of information. Uh, and then we need to know the number of vowels in the current loop. Okay, so we decided the vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. And then we're using these kind of temporary uh, strings to kind of keep track of vowel and character. Again, you didn't have to do that, but again, it makes your code a little bit easier to read. So we iterate through the vowels. Say the current vowel is vowels.substring, blah, blah, blah. And then each time through, as I said earlier, we're starting at zero. So we have zero A's, then we count the A's. We have zero E's, we count the E's, and so forth. We iterate through the second string, and then we get the character, so the current character of that string. And then we can just compare it. If vowel equals character, we increment the number of vowels. And then we have to check and see if the number of vowels is greater than the maximum number of vowels. If it is, we set that to the new maximum, and we say the max vowel is the current vowel. And then once all the loops are done, we print our output. Et voila.